there's a whole other set of things that come out of this. And that is a whole set of technological things which are useful. And so what we have then is a much greater resource for drawing out things for ourselves. Now, tell you a little story. This has to do with Columbus. Now I take liberties with some of the events of history, but never with the essence. Anyway, once upon a time, the whole world knew that the world was flat. All the navigation, astronomy, etc., was worked on the basis that the world was flat. PhDs started their premises from that, and so on and so forth. Now, one day in Portugal was a young, unemployed sailor named Christopher Columbus. And since he was employed, he had a lot of time on his hands, and since he was young, he could be curious. He watched the ships. And the ships, he noticed, went in an arc. He had never noticed that before. He said to himself, that's impossible, because the world is flat and they should fall off the end. He kept watching the ships. Finally, he said to himself, the world must be wrong. That was a frightening thought, a frightening thought, that he, this little unemployed sailor, young, pipsqueak, could think that the great minds were wrong. But he saw. It didn't fit what he saw. So he had this inside himself, this observation, a great burden. What was he going to do with it? Well, like most of us, when we have such a thing, we want to find out if we're crazy or not. And so we try to find and see if someone else has seen what we've seen. And Columbus did the same thing. He walked among his friends and started to talk. And at the beginning, many of them had glazed eyes and walked right past him. Finally, after a while, one of his friends said, Come here, Columbo, old kid and said, you know, I saw it too, okay? Well, they dug a big hole and went down the big hole because this is a terrible burden and a terrible, scary thing to be against the tide. Well, finally, there were some others that came and they had seen it too, and they talked down in this deep hole because once you can find somebody else that saw what you saw, now it gets even greater, the burden that you have about doing something about it. You cannot stop. But to bring something to the world that is not there is a great risk. Well, they finally got up their courage that they would take this risk to see what the, what the world was really like. And so finally one of them had an idea, since they were all poor, curious, poor, they would ask Queen Isabella. Now, Queen Isabella turned out to be the kind of a character who really didn't care whether the world was flat or round. She just responded to nice, lusty kids, guys, male guys. So when they came to ask her, she said, sure, here's the money. Go take it and go see what you can see. Well, you know what this history is. They made three ships, and they found out that the world indeed was not flat, but was elliptical. Now, I know that caused great consternation because it meant that navigation had to be revamped, astronomy had to be revamped, virtually all the material and the information in light of this new finding had to be revamped. And you suppose that went on immediately? I don't think so. I think that there were people that resisted this all over the place. Like people when the telephone, Alexander Graham Bell, it was at the beginning of the telephone, they knew he was a witch. This was witchcraft at his, in, its, and in its manifestation. When Edison developed the light bulb and electricity, the same charge was leveled at him. Anybody who brings in anything new stands the chance of being raked over the coals and sometimes killed, as in the past.
All right. So, I think it took a while before all of the other observations were updated to meet the new information. However, if today you would meet someone and they would say the world is flat, you wouldn't even get upset inside. You would know you would know that they were just kind of bonkers and you wouldn't worry about it. You wouldn't get upset at all because you know better. Concretely, you know better. Now, let me tell you what I think. I think that up until this time of the world, we have behaved as though people were two-dimensional, really flat, something to be moved around, controlled, owned. And what we have now found is that people are round. And we are calling that roundness, that approach to people, humanistic. We found out something about what humans are like. Now, one of the things that's important to remember, Columbus did not invent the round world. And I certainly, and people like me, did not in invent round people. We just found out that they're round. And that, for me, is where we are today. We're at a crossroads, an important crossroads, of how we view people. That's why it's possible now for all the different kind of therapies to go into education, education for being more fully human, using what we know as a pathology as only something that tells us that something is wrong, and then move toward how can we use this to develop round people. And that's where I see this, this going at this point in time. And I'm fortunate in being one of the people who pushed my way through to know that people are really round. And that's then what it means for me to look at people as people who can have potential and have it realized, can have dreams and have it worked out. And that what people are bringing to me in the guise of problems are their ways of living which keep them hampered and pathologically oriented. So, Armed with that, as I look then in the next three days, and you look with me, and be with me, in looking at how we can move toward more joy, more reality, more connectedness, more accomplishment, and more opportunities for growth, while we look at how we can do this very fine education for people. Now that's